Eric from Tomcat Gas Training and you're about to watch part two on this tutorial on ventilation for gas appliances. Now this tutorial is designed for three new gas engineers or gas engineers resitting their ACS assessment. So if you're neither of these then you're watching the wrong video. But if you are a trainee gas engineer and this is the first video you're watching, you're watching and starting at the wrong place. You need to go back to video one where we start on open fluid appliances. Now this video, we're going to be looking at room sealed appliances and flueless appliances. So let's get on with it. Now the next part we're going to be looking at is compartment ventilation for room sealed appliances. Okay, different than open fluid because room sealed appliances only need compartment ventilation for cooling. They also only need this ventilation if they are high water content cast iron heat exchangers. Like I've said in the video before, there are no condensing boilers and the market at the moment that require compartment ventilation for cooling. Okay, it's, it's not been around for a long time, compartment ventilation for boilers. So this is for high water content cast iron heat exchangers, the old balanced fluid boilers. Okay, so this is the drawing we're gonna be looking at. So we're gonna look at this first. This is a room sealed cast iron balanced fluid boiler in a compartment and the vents are going into a room. First of all, let's have a look at the chart and let's get some information from that. Now this is the chart we're going to be working from. So this is room sealed appliance ventilation in a compartment. Again, you can see there's high and low vents. This time, if we're taking the air from the room, we need 10 centimeters squared per kilowatt of um, combustion air. And same for the low one. If we're going to outside, it's half that figure, so it's five and five. Now again, the reason why these are half the amount, because we're taking fresh air from outside, or we're taking um, stagnant air from within the house. So it's also pre-warmed air in the house, because remember, this is for cooling. So in the winter, your, your air temperature in your house is gonna be 21 degrees anyway, okay? So this is why we have fresh air and we've got stagnant air okay so that's why we're doubling up so let's have a look on the board and put this into uh, some kind of text now, first one we're going to look at is this one so we can see this is a 30 kilowatt gross boiler it's installed in a compartment and it's taking its cooling ventilation from a room okay so if we look here we have a high and low vents so we've got high and low vents so our high vent, remember this is 30 kilowatt gross, not net. So we need to um, change it to net. So we do 30 divided by 1.11, because remember the latent heat, the 11% difference between gross and net, 1.11. We need, it gives us a total of 27.02, and that's kilowatts, okay? So we do 27.02 times 10, okay? Because we need 10 centimeters squared per kilowatt. So it gives us 270.2 centimeters squared free air. The low level one, it's the same again. So it's 27.02 times 10 again is 270.2 again centimeters squared. So they are the same vents, so it's a lot easier for the calculation to work out. So when you're doing a room sealed appliance for compartment ventilation for cooling, the two figures are the same, unlike the open fluid appliance which we did before. Now, if we look at the one below, where we're taking the air from outside, it's five and five. So like we just said from the uh, little chart, we're taking fresh air so we can half the amount of free air. Let's have a look at the calculation for that. But this time, it's a 30 kilowatt net boiler, not gross. So it's 30 times five is 150 centimeters squared, and 30 times five is 150, because remember, they are the same size vents for cooling. So that's the major difference 
between room sealed cooling and open fluid. On the room sealed they are the same figures, on the open fluid they're double, so the bottom vent is double the top vent. Okay, now let's move on to flueless appliances. Now we're going to look at flueless appliance ventilation. Now you can see this is a table. This table is available in most uh, gas training manuals. It's also in the uh, 5440. Okay, so first one we're going to look at are cookers. So cookers, as we know, are flueless appliances. So this is our cooker section. So we can see we have a domestic oven, hot plate, grill, or any combination therefore, but it says there's a one down there. Hmm, now then, let's have a look and see what that one means. So this number one means cookers, unless a single burner hot plate must not, and that's must not be installed in a bed sitting room less than 20 meters cubed volume. Okay, so that's really important. So cookers cannot be installed in a bed sit unless it's a single burner hot plate or the room is larger than 20 meters cubed. Okay, so that's what the number one means. Let's go back up to the top. Now, next one along is maximum um, appliance rated input and it says limit and it's in a net figure. Okay, so not gross, this is net and it says there are no restrictions. Okay, so you can pretty much put in whatever size cookie you like, as long as it fulfills the rest of it. Now, it goes off room volume in meters cubed. So remember, when we're talking about ventilation, for open fluid and room sealed, we're going off the kilowatts. For flueless appliances, we're going off the size of the room. Okay, so if the room is less than five meters cubed you require a hundred centimeters squared of free air you also require an openable window or equivalent it says yes it also says notes C note one below and C note two below okay so let's have a look and see what note two says so it says, if the room or internal space containing these appliances has a door opening direct to outside, no permanent opening is required. Now then, let's go back up to the top and see if there is a number two there, which there isn't. There's no two. So it has to have 100 centimeters squared and an openable window. Now, if the room is five to 10 meters cubed in size, we need 50 centimeters squared and an openable window, but there is a two there. If the uh, room has a door, not into a living room, but direct to outside, then no purpose provided ventilation is required. So, if it's 5 to 10 with just a window, you need 50 centimetres squared. But if it's 5 to 10 with a door and a window, you don't need any ventilation. Now, the window is what we call a purge point. So, it means it can get rid of vitiated, stagnant air full of moisture to vent the room quickly. Okay, so that's why we need an openable window for flueless appliances. All flueless appliances require an openable window. Or it does say equivalent. So things like permanent ventilation, doors, that kind of stuff. Now, if the room is greater than 10 meters cubed, we don't need any ventilation. Okay. So quick recap, five to 10, we need 100. Between 5 and 10, we need 50, but if we've got a door, we don't need ventilation. If it's greater than 10, we don't need any ventilation, but they all require an openable window. Okay. 
So that is the ventilation requirements for a cooker. Now let's look at instantaneous water heater. So you can see it's maximum appliance rated heat input. Its limit in net figure is 11 kilowatts. So if you have a water heater of 14 kilowatts, it's not allowed. Okay. So you would not be allowed that appliance in the room. Okay. So if it's less than five, it's not permitted. So you got less than 11 in a room of less than five meters cubed. It's not allowed. If it's between five to 10, we require 100 centimeters squared. If it's between 10 and 20, we need 50. And if it's greater than 20, we don't need any, but we need an openable window. And you can note there is no number two, so it doesn't matter if there's a door, you still require the ventilation. So five to 10, 100, 10 to 20, 50, above 20, we don't need any, but we still require an openable window and there's no notes at the side. Okay, so that is your um, instantaneous water heater, which is flueless, remember, not room sealed, not open flued, it's flueless. Okay, so let's do a working example of a cooker installed in a kitchen. Now, this is uh, my very crude drawing of a kitchen. So here's our cooker sat in the kitchen and the cooker is 24 kilowatts net. Now, remember from the table, it doesn't matter at the moment for the size of the cooker. Now, let's look at the room volume. The room volume, it's three meters wide by two meters long and 1.5 meters high. There is also an openable window, but there is no door direct to outside. So this is our scenario, okay? First of all, let's work out the room volume, because remember, flueless appliances, the ventilation is worked off the room volume. So what we have is three meters by two meters by 1.5 meters equals nine meters cubed okay now then nine meters cubed on the table it says so from the table a room size of five meters cubed to ten meters cubed needs 50 centimeters squared plus an openable window okay now remember the two what was circled and what it said at the bottom it said if there is a door direct to outside it does not require ventilation, just the openable window. Has it got a door? No, okay. So it requires 50 centimeters squared plus an openable window. Now, my opinion, that's the easiest ventilation you're gonna do in any of exams you do, okay? Any reassessments or any initial assessments on ventilation that will be the easiest question but most people get tripped up because they don't read the questions correctly okay so make sure you read the question twice before you answer it because you will get tripped up okay so that's our working example of ventilation of a cooker in a room now the next one we're going to look at is these two space heaters. So we've got a space heater in a room or a space heater in an internal space. These are flueless space heaters, so flueless fires. Okay, remember this is all about flueless, so this is our flueless space heater. Now, a room is quite obvious what a room is a living room. Okay, but you cannot install a flueless space heater in a bedroom. For obvious reasons, there's no flu attached. We do have safety devices on the flueless space heater of the ASDs, but if you fall asleep with a flueless fire going, then there's every chance you won't wake up. We've also got an internal space. So what do we mean by an internal space? So an internal space could be hallways, or it could be a landing. 
okay so a place where you're not actually sat watching TV basically okay so that's where we have the two different things now 45 watts per meters cubed of heated space what does that mean so for every meters cubed we're allowed 45 watts okay we're gonna look at that very closely so bear that in mind okay now it also says a hundred plus 55 for every kilowatt net the appliance rated heat input exceeds 2.7 kilowatts net so that's basically telling us if a space heater is installed in a room of 45 watts per meters cubed the maximum size fire we can have on a hundred centimeters uh, squared free air is 2.7 kilowatts if we have more than 2.7 kilowatts then we will have to increase our ventilation by 55 centimeters squared per kilowatt plus the 100. It also says we need an openable window. Now, I think we're missing a trick here with the notes because flueless space heaters cannot be the primary source of heat within a room. What does that mean? Well, basically, it will require a radiator in that room. If there's no radiator, we ain't having no flueless space heater. Okay, so it can't be the primary source of heat. It can only be the secondary. Next thing, it says we need an openable window. Okay, but this vent, it doesn't tell us where the vent needs to be. The vent needs to be installed at least a meter away from the appliance. Okay, so I think that should be in the notes. It should say, cannot be the primary source of heat. It still say it has an openable window. Okay, and it must say the vent must be at least a meter away. Now, what we're going to do is, I'm going to look at this one first, and we're going to try and put this into some kind of text, and we're going to put it on the board. I'm going to try and help you understand how we work this out. There are numerous ways of doing this. They all work out the same way. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way to remember. But it's not necessarily the best. Well, I think it is, but there you go. That's just my opinion. So let's have a look at that now on the board and let's see what we can come up with. Well, let's have a look at this example I've got on the board here. Now it says a flueless space heater of 3.7 kilowatts net is in a room of 90 meters cubed. Okay, so what this question is telling us is the kilowatts net appliance is 3.7 kilowatts and the room volume is telling us it's in a room, not an internal space, of 90 meters cubed. Okay. So we need to work off the 45 watts per meters cubed because it's in a room, not an internal space. Okay, so what do we do next? Well, we take this 45, this one here, 45, and we times that by the room volume, the 90. Okay, so 45 times 90 gives us 4,050 watts, okay? Now then, how many watts are there in a kilowatt? Yeah, there's a thousand, okay? So there's a thousand watts in a kilowatt. So to turn 4,050 watts into kilowatts, we divide by a thousand, gives us 4.05 kilowatts. So what that is telling us, is the maximum size kilowatts we can have for a flueless space heater in a room of 90 meters cubed is just over four kilowatts. What size is our fire? 3.7 kilowatts. So can it be installed? Hopefully you said yes you can. Okay, because it's 3.7 kilowatts and we're allowed four. Okay. Okay, so that's the first stage we've done. Next one is we need to work out the size of the vent, yeah? Now, 3.7 kilowatts, so 3.7. 
Our table told us for a hundred centimetres squared of free air, we are allowed 2.7 kilowatts net. If we go over 2.7 kilowatts, we need to add an additional 55 centimetres squared of free air plus the hundred. Okay, so 3.7 minus 2.7, because that's what we're allowed, even I can work this one out, is one kilowatt, okay? One kilowatt times 55, because that's what we have to add for 45 watts per meters cubed in a room, gives us 55 centimeters squared. Plus the 100, because the 100 is what we need for 2.7, the 55 is what we need for the extra kilowatt, gives us a total of 155 centimetres squared of free air. Okay, plus an openable window, plus a primary source of heat, plus the vent needs to be a metre away. These are all the things we've got to be thinking about for a flueless space heater installed in a room. Okay, it's very important we get this right. Other checks we need to do on this flueless space heater, we need to gas rate them, we need to do the burner pressures, we need to flue gas analyse them, we need to flue gas analyse the room, we need to check safety devices. There is a lot of information we need to get from flueless space heaters, okay? They are pretty dangerous, so we need to make sure we're on top of working out the ventilation, working out the room size, okay? Now, if it hasn't got an openable window, but it's got patio doors going straight to outside, not to a conservatory, going straight to outside, then we can allow that, okay? But if it hasn't got this primary source of heat, and the vent isn't a metre away from the actual appliance, we can at-risk these appliances, okay? We need to follow our unsafe situations procedure when we're doing this. That's the 45 watts per meters cube. I'm going to do 90 watts now, so let's have a look at it. Okay, so next one we're going to look at is the heated space in an oh, space heater in an internal space. But first of all, hope you were listening for this one and watching carefully. So, what did I actually spell wrong on the board? So, let's see if you were actually paying attention. Okay. Something I spelt purposely wrong on the board. I don't know whether I did or not. Anyway, <laughs> what did I spell wrong on the board? I spelt window wrong. What a dummy. Anyway, let's crack on. So, space eater in an internal space. This time we've got 90 watts of meter, uh, per meters cubed of heated space with 100. But it says plus 27.5 for every kilowatt net the appliance rated input exceeds 5.4 kilowatts. Okay, so basically again what that means is 90 watts per meters cubed in an internal space we're allowed up to 5.4 kilowatts on a hundred centimeter squared. Go over the 5.4 kilowatts, we need to add an extra 27.5 centimetres squared per kilowatt over the 100. Okay, so that's what this means. So let's go on the board, back to the board. Hopefully, I will spell window properly and we can crack on and sort this one out. So this is 90 watts per meters cubed of heated space in an internal space, okay? Not a room, so a landing or a hallway. Let's have a look. Now let's have a look at the, this next one of 90 watts per meters cubed installed in an internal space. So the scenario we have a flueless space heater of six kilowatts net in a internal space of 90 watts. Uh, 90 meters cubed, sorry. Okay, so we're looking at the 90 watts per meters cubed. 
So like we did before, 90 times 90 equals 8,100 watts. 8,100 watts divided by 1,000 gives us 8.1 kilowatts. So can we install this six kilowatt fire on this landing or uh, hallway of um, 90 meters cubed? Hopefully you said yes you can because we're allowed 8.1 and we've got six. Okay, now according to the sheet, it says we require 100 centimeters squared of free air up to 5.4 kilowatts. Over 5.4 kilowatts, we need to add 27.5 centimeters squared per kilowatt over this 5.4. So we have a six kilowatt fire. So six minus 5.4, because that's what we're allowed, equals 0.6. Hopefully the maths is better than me spelling. So times 27.5, because we're allowed 27.5, or we need 27.5 centimeters squared over this 5.4 gives us a total of 16.5 centimetres squared, plus the 100 gives us a total of 116.5 centimetres squared of free air, plus again the openable window, plus the primary source of heat, plus the vent needs to be a metre away, and the window spelt correctly. Okay, now that is a look at flueless ventilation. If you've liked this video, why don't you give us a thumbs up? I'll leave a constructive comment down below. Make sure you do your spellings correct, okay? If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, why the hell not and get over there and get it done, okay? Uh, give us, uh, hit that notification bell, because when you hit the notification bell, we tell you when the videos go up every Wednesday. Video? Videos, okay. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up for, to me. Watch out for the next video because I'm going to look at multiple appliances on ventilation. Cheers.